Good morning, wet shavers, coffee lovers, and podcast listeners everywhere. It's Mark with georgetune.com. It's time for another second cup. So grab a cup of coffee, kick back, relax, put in your earbuds, adjust your speaker volume, and let's talk some wet shaving and a few other things in podcast form. What is Second Cup? Well, Second Cup is a podcast that will give you some additional information that didn't make the Monday morning mailbag deadline. This might be something that is time sensitive. For instance, a sale that could be ending before the next Monday morning mailbag airs, or a piece of late breaking information that viewers have passed along that is equally time sensitive, or something else regarding the wet shaving world that needs to be broadcast in a timely fashion. And we'll also have some time to chit chat and discuss some other things like coffee, movies, streaming shows, books, that sort of thing. So thanks for tuning in to Second Cup. And I hope you subscribe to the podcast where you can also find episodes of the Monday Morning Mailbag in podcast form. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We'll get the show underway in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the August 28th, 2023 episode of Second Cup. How are you this morning? I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I have got right here. Can you hear that? (laughs) Those are the uh, Black Rifle Curd cups that I have uh, right in front of me here because I'm enjoying a cup of uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company AK-47 Espresso Blend. And I've only got a few of these uh, Curd cups left in the uh, box that holds a dozen rounds, as they call it. Uh, I got, yeah, I got about four left there. Uh, really a delightful cup of coffee. Let me give you, <laughs> let me give you the description of it because it kind of ties into what I'm going to tell you. Uh, whether in rain, snow, mud, desert, or mountainous terrain, the AK-47 never fails to deliver a reliable dose of "wake the hell up." <laughs> this coffee will have you pushing hot on all 30 rounds of energy, and even Kalishnikov would be proud. Built with expertly roasted. Colombian and Brazilian beans built with expertly roasted Colombian and Brazilian beans. We present this medium roast with rich nutty aromas and complex citrus and dark chocolate flavors. The perfect blend of Brazilian dark roast and Colombian light roast comes in boxes of 12, 32, or 50 coffee rounds. Well, I've got a box of 12 here that's down in my last four. I'm drinking <laughs> the the last of the, well, I had five. I'm drinking that fifth one. Now I got four left. But uh, yeah, it's a really, really terrific, terrific coffee. And I dressed it up with a little bit of maple syrup this morning, a couple of teaspoons. Yeah. I mean, being a maple syrup uh, country, you got to do that every once in a while. And I'm enjoying this uh, cup of coffee in my, uh, in a coffee mug I don't think I've used before. This is my Campbell's Soup uh, coffee mug. It looks like a Campbell's uh, chicken noodle soup can. And it says, mm-mm, feel better. <laughs> Actually, feel mm-mm better. Okay, I got that backwards. But yeah, that's a terrific, terrific coffee mug. Hang on one minute. Looks just like the soup can. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And who hasn't had a uh, a cup or a bowl of chicken noodle soup when they were a little kid? And uh, home from school because you were feeling a little bit under the weather. Boy, that alone right there brings back a lot of memories, that's for sure. Chicken noodle soup from Campbell's. Yeah, that was definitely a staple. When uh, when you were under the weather, a uh, little kid growing up, that's what mom used to make. But anyhow, I wanted to say about waking the heck up. <laughs> because uh, Thursday night into early Friday morning, we had some terrible, terrible storms come through the Northeast Ohio area, absolutely awful. And uh, a lot of people lost power. And uh, well, here, I'm I'm looking on WKYC Channel TV3's uh, website right here. Thousands remain without power after strong storms hit Northeast Ohio. First Energy says some residents will be in the dark through Wednesday. The National Weather Service has confirmed that six tornadoes touched down in northern Ohio on Thursday night into Friday morning. And that's why I wanted to talk about this AK-47 espresso and wake the heck up, because that's what happened to me uh, early Friday morning. 
And I was I was asleep, and all of a sudden, all of my devices went off. All my all my Amazon Echo devices, my phones, everything went off. And uh, I woke up in a start, and I I looked at the the screen on my phone, and there was a tornado warning. And essentially, I'm paraphrasing here. Essentially, it said, "Get in the basement now. Get into the basement now." Uh, so you know, I scrambled. I scrambled out of bed and I put on some uh, some clothing and some footwear to make sure that in case I had to get outside if it was going to be wet and broken glass. You don't know what you're thinking, really. I mean, you're thinking, gee whiz, tornado could hit the neighborhood and there's going to be a lot of debris laying around. And um, I went into the to the basement and that's when I heard the uh, siren warning system in Chardon, Ohio, go off. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is, this is, wow. Well, luckily it passed over our area uh, and uh, sorry to hear that it it hit some other areas and tore up uh, some of those other areas pretty good. Uh, Downtown Cleveland, right around East 71st, that's really rare. They also had a tornado come through. And uh, I'm, I'm, I don't believe there was any loss of life. And that's a good thing because you can always replace all the stuff that the tornado has has torn up, but uh, I'm so so I'm all, so I'm very very glad to hear. I haven't heard any reports that there was any loss of life, so it seems like everybody got through it. You know, some areas were hit worse than others, but uh, no loss of life from what I hear. So um, I'm just glad everyone is safe and sound now, and the storms have gone through and. Uh, We'll get back to uh, hammering and putting things back together. But, yeah, really, really kind of scary. I mean, that was probably the first time, maybe in a long, long time, that I've heard tornado warning sirens go off like that in the middle of the night. And I tell you, before I went down in the basement, I opened up the front door just to look outside, and it was deathly still. I mean, it was so still. Uh, That was not a good sign. So, uh yeah, I closed the door and just scrambled downstairs and waited it out. So needless to say, I was up most of the night waiting for these storms to uh, to blow through and uh, praying that it wouldn't uh, do uh, significant damage to uh, to the area. So um, again, I hope I hope everybody out there is is rebuilding and that there was no loss of life and that everything is okay. So uh, yeah, really really scary. And I hope the weather is pleasant where you're at right now. Uh, it's a really, really scary thing to go through, and I don't wish it on anybody. So, ah, I'm just glad to be with you this morning. <laughs> I'm really glad to be with you this morning. It really is great. I'm I'm so happy to have a cup of coffee with you this morning, and it's just great getting together with you and talking wet shaving every single week. And uh, I'm just glad that uh, I didn't have to delay anything because of damage or debris or anything like that from the storms. So, uh, again, really, really wonderful to be with you. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee uh, with me. Uh, You know what? We're going to pay a few bills and then we'll get the show underway in just a moment. Well, I have an Amazon Fire TV stick. Many of you out there probably have the Fire TV Uh, You might have a Fire TV stick like I have. Maybe you have a Roku box, something like this. But you can download various apps and stream uh, a lot of different programming and movies and that sort of thing through these devices. Now, I had to buy a new Fire TV stick because the older ones were incompatible with my new Internet connection. And I have the television off to the side, so when I'm doing uh, something like this or I'm editing... Uh, I'll mute it and I'll have the content running in the background just so I can look up and see what's on television and uh, get an update if there's any information or there's something interesting happening, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, the app that I have on my Fire TV stick, and oh, by the way, uh, the new Fire TV stick is a 4K Fire TV stick. And I'm not watching anything in 4K because none of my televisions are 4K. But it really does offer some great performance. And I bought it this past Prime Day. And I, it was like 53 55% off, something like that. I think I got it for 16 17 bucks, something like that. And ordinarily, 45 or $50, something like that. It was like anywhere from 15 to $20, something like that. But a really, really good price point. So I went ahead and bought it. Plugged it in, and yeah, I mean, it was night and day. It just streamed so very, very quickly, and a great picture, and um, 
a lot of great content uh, via the various apps you can download. And that's the whole point here. I downloaded an app uh, called Pluto TV. I have been using this app for quite some time. If you don't have the Pluto TV app, I highly recommend it. This has a lot of great content on it. It has movies and classic television shows and news programming and uh, mystery shows from, uh, from the United Kingdom, from England. BritBox is a channel that they have up there, which is uh, really neat. And just a wide variety of programming. Uh, however, because it's free, uh, they run commercials. So they'll run, they'll run commercials while they're running a movie. They'll run commercials during these classic TV show channels. They'll, they'll run commercials on all their programming. And I don't mind that so much uh, as long as the um, commercials are uh, entertaining and informative. And I've come across some very different commercials uh, on the Pluto TV app that, yes, they, they've given me some nice information about new products and services out there. And some of the commercials have been very entertaining and I don't mind it. And it kind of breaks up, uh, you know, my viewing habits. I don't mind that uh, at, at all. If a commercial runs, I can get up and, you know, <laughs> go get a cup of coffee and come back and sit down. So I don't mind it too much. Um, the point of this is I saw a commercial on the Pluto TV app that I have not seen anywhere else, and this was for King C. Gillette grooming products. And this particular commercial was advertising the, key, the King C. Gillette electric beard trimmer. And they were showing how you can refine your beard uh, and uh, you know get nice straight edges, uh, uh, along your beard lines and do some close trimming and, and that sort of thing. But but the last shot of the entire King C. Gillette product line, you know, that last shot they have there, oh, the King C. Gillette beard trimmer, then they show you a, a picture, a shot of everything under the King C. Gillette brand. That shot had the King C. Gillette safety razor dead center right there in the middle. And I thought, wow. That's very, very telling. That is really telling. That is the company acknowledging and recognizing that the traditional wet shave is big, that it's coming back in a big, big way. Otherwise, why would they put that safety razor right there in the middle? Right there in the middle where your eye would be drawn right to it. Your eye's not drawn to the beard trimmer or any of the other products that are that are in there. I mean, you'll see them, but for me, my I went right dead center to the King C. Gillette Safety Razor. And we know the King C. Gillette Safety Razor. I've done a review on it. Many of you out there have it. It's a wonderful razor. Uh, I think it was launched originally only at the Walgreens store. And I know I went out and uh, grabbed one from the Walgreens store when it was first being launched and did a review. I think I did a video from my car after coming out of the came, coming out of my local Walgreens saying, "Look what I got. I got a King C Gillette razor." And uh, I think now they're they it's fallen in price and I think it's uh, a little more widely available online and it is a terrific razor. So if you're looking for a a, a really good razor that gives you a nice shave and is also great for beginners, check out the King C Gillette uh, razor. It really is terrific. But my point is, it was so great to see it right there uh, in a commercial, dead center in that last shot showing their entire King C. Gillette product line. There it, was, there it was right there in the center, the King C. Gillette safety razor. And this is Gillette saying, wow, you know, the traditional wet shave is coming back in a big, big way. And uh, yeah, so I think that is just great to see that this large company realizes that a lot of us out there have gone back to the traditional wet shave because it's a better way to shave. Many of us feel it's the best way to shave. And for them to take that safety razor and put it, you know, right there, dead center, um, you know, on the screen says a lot. So, uh, you know, download the Pluto TV app and, uh, you know, uh, boot it up and uh, check out some of the programming and you might see that commercial as well. For all I know, this commercial might be on broadcast television as well. I haven't seen it on broadcast television uh, yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep an eye out for it. 
But uh, if you uh, if you have the Pluto TV, if you have the Pluto TV app, or you are um, or or please download the Pluto TV app and boot it up, check it out, and uh, keep your eye peeled. Keep your eyes peeled for that uh, particular ad. It really was neat to see that safety razor right there, dead center in that last shot. All right, I just want to pass that on to you, and I think it's a little little bit of great news for the traditional wet shave and all the traditional wet shavers out there. In this morning's Monday morning mailbag, we talked about uh, Vander Hagen uh, ice-tempered stainless steel razor blades, and you can buy these at uh, a local big box store. And I was going through my uh, shaving gear, and look what I found. Yeah, that's it right there. It's a plastic case of Vander Hagen ice-tempered stainless steel razor blades. And here's something that I was not aware of. I just noticed this on the label. These are made in Germany. And I just noticed that uh, getting ready for the podcast. I was just thinking about uh, Gary's uh, message uh, to the channel about the Vander Hagen razor blades being available at local big box stores and giving him a very, very good shave. And I went through my uh, shaving gear thinking to myself, maybe I have some of these. And sure enough, I have some right here. And I must have gotten these early on in my wet shaving journey because I did buy the Vander Hagen shave soap, which I think is very, very good uh, shave soap uh, for the uh, for the price point. Really, really terrific stuff. Um, uh, so, you know what? I'm going to try these again. I can't remember if I have tried these or not. I'm guessing that I probably tried these early on, but it's been so long, I can't really, re I can't really recall. But being made in Germany, I'm wondering, are these made by Wilkinson Sword? Are they made by Mueller? Uh, it has a similar logo, that windmill logo that uh, Mueller has. Vander Hagen has a similar logo. I wonder if the two companies aren't related in some way. If anyone out there knows, please comment or uh, send me an email at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and let me know. This is worthy of a further further discussion on the Monday Morning Mailbag and Second Cup Podcast. Absolutely. So uh, thanks again to Gary for the heads up on the Vander Hagen razor blades. I really am looking forward. There they are right there. <laughs> I really am looking forward to using these. Uh, and uh, now that I know they're made in Germany, yeah, I think the quality is going to be very, very good. So thanks again, uh, Gary. Really do appreciate it. And folks, we'll get a... Uh, We'll get a review together and uh, talk more about the uh, Vander Hagen razor blades on the Monday morning mailbag for sure. Absolutely. So thanks again, Gary. Really do appreciate it. And uh, remember, folks, Vander Hagen ice tempered stainless steel blades made in Germany, available online at Amazon and also at your favorite local big box store like Target. I received this message from a viewer named Kevin Weiss regarding Denton Magic's Pink Floyd Shave Soap review that recently ran on the channel. Uh, and he wrote, you must have buried them with orders. It's sold out on the website. I will check back in a few weeks. Great video as usual. Well, Kevin, thanks very much for the nice words on the review. I really do appreciate it. The uh, Shave Soap, the Pink Floyd Shave Soap is an absolutely awesome, awesome scent. This is an homage to uh, Pinot Clubman Musk. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I have never used Pinot Clubman Musk. However, it's right there in the ballpark with uh, regular Pinot Clubman. It's a little, the, the, the musk is a little, a little heavier, a little, has a little more body to it. I love this scent a lot. It's, a, it's got that classic vintage barbershop kind of vibe to it. Absolutely wonderful. And, of course, the, it's a Denton Magic shave soap, and it just lathers a treat. The lather builds so quickly and offers some really good protection, glide, slickness. Really, really terrific, terrific uh, shave soap. Uh, so, yeah, I really do like it a lot. And uh, Mark Denton happened to comment uh, in the uh, section, uh, the comment section uh, of the uh, review I did on Pink Floyd, and he writes, Thanks, Mark, for showcasing Pink Floyd. That was one I've had in mind for quite some time now, and I'm glad I finally did it. I love regular Clubman, but wanted to do more of a unique twist on it. Pinot Clubman Musk has a pink tint to it, and obviously I'm an Andy Griffith Show fan. 
Continuing with my love of the Andy Griffith Show, watch out for the old fife coming next. <laughs> Thanks again. How about that? Old fife on its way. And, of course, he's got uh, Mayberry Man, which is just an absolutely beautiful scent. So I love this Andy Griffith Mayberry theme that he's building into his shave soaps. Uh, old fife. Wow. I am looking forward to that one. Folks, you know what? Stay tuned. I uh, hope to get that one from him and share it with all of you. Uh, absolutely wonderful, wonderful uh, shave soaps. And I just love uh, this theme, this Andy Griffith Mayberry theme that he's building on. That's absolutely terrific. Uh, Charles Price also left this comment. I really wish other vendors would make this size. This is in regard to the smaller jar size that Denton Magic offers. It's a two and a half ounce uh, size of a uh, shave soap. I would love, he continues here, I would love to have more variety of soaps and splashes. I would buy lots of different Sterling and Phoenix shaving if they were this size, just like I have bought Denton Magic. Masters of the Green is a great scent. I agree with you. Masters of the Green from uh, Denton Magic, another really, really great scent. Beautiful outdoors, fresh kind of scent. Really, really captures that whole golf course kind of vibe. Absolutely terrific. Yeah, I I like that one a lot too. But I agree with you, uh, Charles. I love the uh, smaller sizes and uh, just makes, uh, makes a, a, a great size for storage and also for travel as well. I think the only downside as far as I can see is if you like to brush load, you're not going to be able to brush load uh, too well with this jar. I mean, you could try. I mean, I might try down the road just to see if I can get the brush in there and see if I can just, you know, grab some soap with my brush. It, it might work, but pretty much it's a uh, it's a scoop out and put into your shaving bowl kind of uh, approach. And a lot of wet shavers do that anyhow. So it works out if you are someone who scoops out your shave soap and, uh, you know, smashes it, smushes it, into the uh, into the shave bowl, a la Robert Ross has always been talking about uh, talking about uh, regarding his slurry method. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really really great size. I really really do agree with you. Again, great for travel, great for storage in the shave den. Yeah, and it's a, you know space saving absolutely. Uh, viewer Matt wrote this great timeless shave. Mark, yeah, I use the timeless razor for the Pink Floyd shave. And uh, Timeless Razors are absolutely wonderful. Uh, Matt continues here. They have some great shaving tools. Yeah, they really, really do. And they are going to be at the Ohio Wet Shave Meetup September 30th, 2023 in Hilliard, Ohio. So if you happen to be in that area of Ohio, uh, on or around the September 30th, uh, get a ticket, check it out, and talk to the uh, folks from Timeless Razor. They do make some really, really terrific, terrific shaving gear. Uh, he continues here, uh, must get Denton Magic's Pink Floyd. I love the scent of the Club and Pinot Musk. Uh, proper, back in time, time-tested, original barbershop scent. So the Pink Floyd soap and aftershave must be sweet. Take care, Mark. Again, I have not been able to compare it to the original Pinot Clubman Musk, but I'm but I am guessing that the Pink Floyd is even better than the original. So I am going to go out and get the uh, uh, Pinot Clubman uh, Musk to compare the two. Uh, and again, I'm just thinking because it's Denton Magic, uh, because it's a it's an artisan that the scent is going to be uh, more robust, uh, more uh, carefully crafted than something that is commercially pr produced, uh, you know, in large volumes. I'm not saying that uh, Clubman, you know, Pinot Clubman is is bad. It's it's very good. I like the Clubman Pinot line. I'm just saying because it's a larger commercial production line that, um, you know, I think a little more care goes into it uh, when an artisan is doing it. And, uh, they pay a little more attention to uh, scent notes and that sort of thing, so I think in that regard, it's going to be uh, it's going it's going to have a little more uh, uh, the the scent is going to be a little more robust. It's going to be a little more defined. It's going to be, be a, a a little more present, so to speak, than uh, the uh, original Pinot Clubman Musk. However, again, I'm gonna go. I, I'm definitely gonna stop at uh, Discount Drug Mart. I think they have it there. 
and I'm going to grab it off the shelf there. Uh, if they don't have it, uh, then I will get it on Amazon so I can compare the two because uh, there's a lot of interest in the um, in the Pink Floyd from Denton Magic, and I'm sorry to hear that it's sold out, but I think that is more of the uh, the fact that wet shavers love love the Pinot Clubman scent and the Pinot Clubman musk scent. So I think that's what is driving that. I'm very flattered that um, that uh, Kevin uh, Kevin said that uh, you know the review had a little something to do with it, and maybe. Maybe it did and bring it to uh, the attention of uh, viewers and wet shavers out there, but I think the fact that it's it's that you know classic Pinot Clubman you know scent, the, the 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 regular the musk scent that sort of thing, I think that's why people have such a great interest in it because uh, the wet shaving community absolutely loves that scent. So, gentlemen, thanks so much for the comments regarding uh, the. Uh, Pink Floyd Shave Soap from Denton Magic, the Timeless Razors, and also allowed me to give a reminder to all of you regarding the Ohio Wet Shave Meetup taking place on Saturday, September 30th, 2023 in Hilliard, Ohio. Viewer Rodney Ripplinger checked in and he gave us an update on some wet shaving gear he had been waiting for. And he writes, Hi Mark, I received all the stuff I had on order all on Sunday evening. Viking Odin Razor, Charmin Bowl, Persona Blades, and the Southern Witchcraft Autumn Ash Soap. I had an all-new shave this morning except for the brush. I love the Odin. I had a wonderful BBS shave without really trying. Very comfortable and efficient, too. I like the extra weight of the handle. Perhaps that is why it works so well for me. All for less than twenty dollars. Outstanding. Yeah, let me stop right there. The uh, the new design of the uh, the Vikings Blade Chieftain Razors, the regular Chieftain Razor, and also the Vikings Vikings Blade Chieftain Odin Razor. Terrific, terrific shavers. Absolutely great razors, and uh, a little more maneuverable and nimble than the original Chieftain Razor because the razor head is not quite as wide. So the end tabs of the razor blade are not fully enclosed in the razor head, but uh, there still isn't an, uh, enough of an overhang, so to speak, uh, to get in the way. So uh, it really is a, a nice design and a bit of a compromise on enclosing the uh, end tabs of the razor blade uh, in the razor head. So there's just a little bit uh, protruding, but again, it doesn't get in the way. I've had uh, both face shaves and head shaves with the the Odin and the the new Odin and the new Chieftain, and uh, yeah, I have I I found that the uh, the the exposure of those end tabs minimal and does not get in the way at all, uh, but still delivers a really close, efficient shape. So I'm with you on this, Rodney. I I absolutely agree, and yeah, an absolutely beautiful, beautiful price point, and that extra weight. Yeah, there is extra weight to these uh, new uh, Chieftain razors, and it's just delightful. It really is a delightful, delightful razor that uh, delivers a really comfortable, comfortable shape. So I'm so glad to hear that you're happy with it. He continues here. I am liking the Charmin Bowl. Now, when I originally read his email, I thought he was talking about the Chairman Bowl, the Vikings Blade Chairman Bowl. No, no, no. This is the Charmin Bowl. That's spelled C-H-A-R-M-M-A-N. One word. I am liking the Charmin Bowl. It fits well in the hand and is tall enough to limit soap creep up the sides. It is constructed with three walls. Stainless steel inside and outside with copper in between. I'm sure it will hold heat well for winter lather building. If you're thinking of getting a covered bowl, I think this is the one to get. As far as I know, this is the only bowl constructed with multiple layers of sidewall materials. Now, you know what, folks? Uh, I was reading it, uh, his email, and of course I'm going through a lot of different emails and messages and everything and uh, love hearing from everybody. Uh, and sometimes in order to get through with it, in, in order to get through a, a lot of the, uh, the messages and emails, uh, my skimming skills kind of kick in and I'm skimming through things. And I thought uh, Rodney meant chairman. And no, it's Charmin. And uh, I will link this below. This is available on Amazon. It's a covered 
uh, shaving bowl. It has a it has a lid, and it's thirteen dollars and ninety eight cents. Lowest price in thirty days is what they're reporting here. And uh, you know what? I, I, I'm I'm going to review this one. I'm absolutely going to review this one. It looks like an absolutely wonderful, wonderful shaving bowl, and another great option. And having that triple wall construction, yeah, I think it's gonna. I think it's going to um, retain a lot of heat. So, uh, and they even say here, Charmin stainless steel shaving bowl and cream bowl with lid, three walls, heat preservation, heavyweight steel. Wow, looking forward to this one, absolutely. They're reporting it as, as uh, 270 grams. Let me see what that uh, converts to ounces via my, uh, my assistant here. Alexa, how many ounces is 270 grams? 270 grams is about 9.5 ounces. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's, that is, that's got a little bit of heft to it, doesn't it? Yeah. Considering some of the razors we've reviewed are about, say, uh, four ounces, 4.2 ounces, something like that. Wow. This is, yeah. Looking forward, looking forward to reviewing this one. Absolutely. Uh, Rodney continues here. Um, Let's see, um, Rodney continues here. Although the Persona blades aren't platinum coated, they are coated with something. I don't know what. The first one worked very well for me. Some customers claim to be getting as many as 10 shaves per blade. Well, you know what? I am not someone to push a blade to that limit. With a couple of exceptions, I think the Vikings blade, razor blades, I will go, say, four or five shaves they're, they they claim you'll get uh, like uh, five to seven shaves, something like that. Maybe eight shaves. I'm usually two to three shaves and done with the with the Vikings blade, mild razor blade, or the Cayenne hot uh, razor blade. I'll go an extra shave, but I am usually two to three shaves and done. So maybe two face shaves, one head shave, something like that, and then on to a new blade. There are so many wonderful blades out there. They are very inexpensive, and uh, I like changing up my shave with a different blade, so that's why that's why I do it that way. Uh, Rodney continues here, You are very right about the autumn ash having an organic vibe. It may take some people time to warm up to it. It reminds me of when I was a kid playing in piles of fall leaves in the good old days, or perhaps the bad old days. <laughs> my folks would burn leaves in the street. Everyone did then. The soap reminds me of that also. So I guess I like it and I expect to like it even more as summer changes over to the fall season. And then he wraps up by providing a link to the Charmin uh, Shave Bowl. We will provide that link below uh, in the uh, podcast description so you can check it out. Yeah, the Southern Witchcraft Autumn Ash. Uh, I've had viewers say that it lathers wonderfully, wonderfully well. I did grab some samples at the Maggard Razor meetup. They were there. And uh, I think I talked about their samples a little bit on the Monday Morning Mailbag as follow-up. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm going to review uh, the Autumn Ash because it does have that organic kind of a vibe, kind of a scent to it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm with Rodney. As summer transitions over to autumn, that's when I'll get the review ready on it because I think it'll be perfect for that season. It absolutely is perfect for the autumn season. I guess that's why they call it autumn ash. It has that wet leave, organic, uh, fresh, clean dirt kind of a scent to it. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reviewing that. And Rodney, thanks very much for your comments on autumn ash and confirming what my first impressions were regarding the shave soap. So thanks again for the comments, Rodney. Really, really do appreciate it. Enjoy all that new great wet shaving gear. Now, before I get out of here, I'm going to recommend a movie to you. I may have talked about this movie in a previous Second Cup podcast. If I have, I do apologize, but I'm recommending it again once more, if, if, I, if I've talked about it before, because it's available on Amazon Prime right now. And if you're an Amazon Prime customer, this way, you won't have to pay extra for it. If you like Westerns, you have to see this particular Western. It's called Once Upon a Time in the West. It's directed by Sergio Leone, who is known for 
the spaghetti westerns with Clint Eastwood, uh, A Fistful of Dollars, A Few Dollars More, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. These are classic westerns, uh, spaghetti westerns as they were known as. And uh, these are the movies that made Clint Eastwood a star. Once Upon a Time in the West, I guess you could say, is Sergio Leone's opus. This is, this is his defining Western movie. It's fantastic. It stars Charles Bronson, Henry Fonda, Jason Robards, Claudia Cardinal. Uh, here is a description that they have on Amazon. A mysterious stranger and a notorious desperado join forces to protect a beautiful widow from a ruthless assassin employed by the railroad. That says it all in a nutshell. This is a really terrific, terrific Western. It is so well made. It is so well produced. I'm not going to tell you anything else about it because the ending is fabulous. I will say that. That's not much of a spoiler there. The ending is fabulous. You have to sit down and watch this movie it is a bit slow moving, but that slow moving is very compelling and actually moves the story forward because you're always scratching your head. You're always wondering what's going on here. And all will be revealed. That's all I'm going to say. And the music by uh, Ennio Morricone is absolutely fabulous. Wonderful, wonderful music that complements the movie so very, very well. A classic Western that everybody should see. This was my late father's favorite Western movie of all time. He absolutely loved this movie uh, because he loved the music. He really loved the music. And in looking back, uh, those times when it was on television, I would sit down with him and just watch this movie and drink it all in. It really is a terrific, terrific movie. As soon as it became available on DVD, I, I, I purchased it. It is just a great, great movie. So check it out on Amazon Prime, uh, Once Upon a Time in the West, starring Henry Fonda and Charles Bronson. Really, this is the ultimate Western movie, directed by Sergio Leone with a fabulous music soundtrack by Ennio Morricone. And that wraps up another second cup. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. I sure hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, please share, please subscribe, and pass it along to a fellow wet shaver or friend. My thanks to everyone who commented and contributed to today's show. And I mean this sincerely. Without you, this microphone would be silent. If Second Cup or the Monday Morning Mailbag aren't showing up in your regular podcast feed, please drop me a line at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and we'll try to get it all sorted out. So again, thank you all very much. I look forward to getting together with you again on these podcast airwaves. Until then, enjoy the day, enjoy your shave, and enjoy that Second Cup. Second Cup.